You cannot think of anything without memory. And this gives rise to the whole experience of time. So understanding our relationship with memory is essential for deepening our spiritual understanding because memories take us away from realization. Memories take us away from the immediate here and now. Our whole reality is based on memory. All of science is based on memory. Spiritual understanding is not based on memory. When we realize the nature of our attention, when we realize the nature of consciousness, we drop memory. We, re we realize the true nature of memory. It's as insubstantial as a dream. We like to think some memories are more important than others, but really all memories are of the same essence, aren't they? You can call it mind stuff, if you like, mind stuff. But <laughs> memories are insubstantial. There's a story of Alexander the Great, which I think I've mentioned before. He gave orders for when he died that one hand should be draped out. One hand should be draped outside his coffin to show that even though he was the emperor of the whole known world, he was leaving it with nothing. The understanding is that this is material possessions. You cannot take material possessions with you. But you cannot take memories with you either. Memories are of the same nature as material possessions. They're insubstantial. This is what happens when you die. We worry about the body and all the rest of it, but it's the memories that go. It's like waking up from a dream. In your dream you might have great friendships, you might be passionately in love, you might have a wonderful lover. But you wake up and it melts away and you don't give it a second thought, it was only a dream. The point is our reality is based on memory and memory is of no more substance than a dream. The contemplation of objects that arises in living beings is considered smirti. And this is a technical term for memory or remembrance. Of course, such objects are non-existent. We've explored often enough the notion of an external world and how it is only that, it's notional. How can smirti exist then? It's like remembering a dream. However, since the infinite consciousness is the reality in all beings, such contemplation of objects is, in a manner of speaking, inherent in consciousness. Hence I refer to smirti. However, it is only from the point of view of the common, ignorant men. Enough of it. The natural movement that arises in consciousness is also known as smirti. It's basically non-different from the cognitive process, this process which allows us to make sense of the world to talk about it, to form concepts and communicate. This is the cognitive process and memory is absolutely essential for that. It's not different from it. It's a, it's a function of consciousness. This is what consciousness does. When that movement occurs repeatedly, it is seen externally as matter. When we see a pattern, a pattern that repeats, it becomes more real for us, doesn't it? Even a dream, a recurring dream, becomes more real and significant somehow, doesn't it? We start wondering what it means. First of all, we remember it, we take note of it, and then we start wondering what it means. We try to apply meaning to it. We try to fit it into a pattern. So there are certain patterns that we regard as matter. Whatever the consciousness experiences by its own nature, that is said to be smirti. So this is any notion, any notion that we have. It's all memory. 
everything is of the nature of memory. All our cognition is based on memory, and memory is as insubstantial as dream. All these experiences arise in the infinite consciousness of their own accord, as the very limbs of consciousness without any causal connection. It's just all happening. And again, we've got the analogy of the crow alighting on the coconut palm and a coconut falling off at the same time. We make a connection. It was just coincidence that the coconut fell at the same time as the crow landed on the branch. But we make this connection and we say the coconut falling was caused by the crow alighting. They are called memory. So we make that conclusion, we identify that pattern based on the memory. This is true of all happenings, even when there appears to be coincidental cause. Why should we investigate memory which is thus accidental, when we realise that the objects of perception to which it is related themselves are non-existent? They exist only in the eyes of the ignorant. I am not expanding the means of liberation for the benefit of such ignorant people. It is only meant for those who have been awakened, but who have some doubts concerning it. This is really only for the spiritual practitioner. If you've touched the nature of your attention and you want to come back to it, you'll find all sorts of reasons to demean this practice or to diminish it. And we need, we need to look at these reasons and what these reasons are. This is what inquiry is about. One should never associate with ignorant people who cannot recognize the truth. When a thing is experienced by the consciousness, even just a little, and when that experience is repeated, a mental impression is created. And the word here is samskara. So in a way, samskara is no different from smirti. Thus is the world appearance created. However, all this is pervaded by the infinite consciousness. There is neither a form nor memory related to it. When duality itself is non-existent, then surely there is no bondage. There is only consciousness. Memory is obviously consciousness. If there's no consciousness, there's no memory. And it's upon memory that all our reality is based. <laughs>